I'm Ted Berg, and this is the Baseball Show presented by Pepsi Max. I'm joined today by SNY analyst Bob Ojeda. We're talking about pitches, taking them one by one. Bob, I want to talk about the slider today. Mm -hmm. How do you grip it? Well, the slider is basically uh, an offshoot of the fastball. It's similar grip. Now, every again, all these grips that we talk about, uh, they vary pitcher to pitcher. But the basic one is, again, with the seams, but you slide it up. You want to just kind of off-center the baseball a little bit, and then you want to cut it. You want to keep your you want to keep your hands on top of your fingers on top of it, and here you want to be here with it. You get on the side of it, it gets a little round. You don't want to do that. But now cutter slider, they're very closely related. Okay, um, a lot of times the slider is called a cutter. Cutter is called a slider. The deal, the difference is so you understand that a cutter is a little bit shorter break. It should be about that. A cutter is just meant to be short, late. Slider can be a little bit rounder, a little bit bigger. It's a little different uh, dynamic of that, probably a little bit slower than the cutter. Uh, I think they both can be effective. It depends on the pitcher. It depends if he's a sinker baller or a, a four-seam fastball type guy. And you don't release it like you do a curveball or fastball, exactly. Well, you off-center. You really want to off-center the ball. You want to just right here with it. You want to get that ball again. The curveball is rotating this way. The fastball is rotating this way. The two seamers rotating this way. And now these seams all act in concert and grabbing the air and making the ball do these things. The slider I want this way will tend to make it go this way. I want a little depth. When they talk about depth of a slider, they're talking about the slider that has this. Has it, quite simply, goes down a little bit. That's what you want. A cutter can be a little bit straighter. A little bit more of this. A slider, you'll look, your velocity will be a little bit lower, and you'll get a little bit more of this downward break. It's a pitch for a strikeout. It's a pitch for a ground ball. It's a pitch that you want somebody to chase, especially lefty-lefty, off the plate, away out of the zone. Well, when in account do you want to use a slider? Anytime. Anytime, depending on if you have the ability to throw for a strike. And that's one of the biggest keys to all your secondary pitches. You have to throw them for a strike. And then your confidence level. Confidence level on your pitches, it goes in order. One, two, three, whatever you have, you don't want to get beat in a big situation on number three. Usually you want to get beat on number one. When they use scouting reports, that's what they look at. Big situations, what does this guy not want to get beat with? his worst pitch. So you look for the top two or the top one in that case. It narrows your scope. But a slider is one of those pitches that you can throw any time. But ahead in the count, when a guy's trying to project, you start it in the zone and break it out, or you start it at a guy and break it over the plate. Can you think of any guys historically who had great sliders? Carlton. Carlton had one of the best. Left-hand slider, he broke it down to the right-handed batter's back toe. They couldn't hit it. They swung over the top of it constantly. One of the few lefties who was just dominant with his slider. He'd start it here, and next thing you know is at your back foot if you were a right-hander, and you'd go right over the top. You couldn't lay off it, and you couldn't hit it. Billy Wagner on the Mets had a good one, too. A very good one, yes. Bob, let's take a look at how often some guys use the sliders. Mm -hmm. This is again from 2011, and you see Irvin Santana used it 38.4% of the time. But if a guy's got a good one, I think you'd say you could use it as often as you need. You can. You don't. You, as with any good pitch, you don't want to just live with it. You just can't. You, I mean, you know, you want to think you could throw it over and over, and sometimes you possibly can. You could throw a lot more than what you think on certain days. But overall, you have to mix it up. What mixing it up makes that standalone pitch better if I just constantly feed you this I've got to be perfect with it as I throw different pitches different breaks different velocities different elevations I'm increasing my margin of error so when I make a mistake which I'm gonna over the plate you're not as apt to jump on it and crush it because you've seen a variety of things coming at you is a slider a, a easier secondary pitch to get a feel for than maybe the curveball or the changeup because it feels like mm -hmm. more often especially in bullpens you'll see guys who are just fastball slider guys. Well, I think the slider is, I like it. Very few guys will have good slider, good curveball because they're similar. They're kind of cousins, but to be good at both, that's a bit of an art. That is one of those things that very few guys can do. So you do see guys fastball curve or fastball slider. Then maybe another pitch, change up, splitter, whatever it may be. But a slider is one of those pitches I think is one of the easiest pitches to throw if you throw it properly. If you keep on top of the ball and think cut it and you want the break, you've got to get used to it. But it's one of those pitches, it's not a snap on your elbow type pitch. It's I'm just getting that ball to move this way a little bit. And you, you fool around with it, you play with it when you're playing catch. You can't throw that many in the bullpen because you just don't. But when you're playing catch, you just watch the movement of that pitch. Very easy pitch to throw, very effective pitch, and one of those pitches that, once you get comfortable with it, can be one of those very good surprise pitches when somebody's not looking for it. Tough pitch to hit. 
Well, let's take a look at effectiveness, and this is pitch type linear weights from Fangraphs. It's a stat that measures a pitcher's performance on each type of pitch they throw during the year and converts that performance into run saves relative to average, basically just a measure of its effectiveness. Mm -hmm. You see Cliff Lee at the top of the list. He's near the top of all of these lists. I think the easy conclusion here, Cliff Lee is pretty good. Yeah, I think in a nutshell, that sums it up. He's got pitches that he can throw for a strike, but there again, the key to all these secondary pitches is being able to throw for a strike at will and then being able to get you to chase it. But the other side to this whole thing, Ted, is these pitches are effective only if I know what you're looking for. I read your swings, I, I read your takes, I read your foul balls. I read what's going on in your head, and then I'll pitch to you accordingly. Do I want that slider for a strike, or do I want to try to get you to chase it? Is the situation of the game, you're going to be a little more anxious, more, a, little, a little more apt to chase, then I'll move it over a little bit. So there's a lot factored into the pitch. It's not just the pitch per se. It's situation. It's pressure. It's the particular batter. And Part being of, able to use the fastball matters, too. Well, that sets the whole thing up. There's no doubt in my mind the most important pitch, most the number one pitch in baseball, I don't care what anybody says, is a well-placed fastball. No question. You need all these other ones, but without a well-placed fastball, you got nothing. Bob, thanks so much. You're welcome, Ted. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Baseball Show presented by Pepsi Max.